guys, this is Pino21, and um, I'm basically going to be showing you guys how to flat hop your buses and how to add an MNED in order to complement your R hop. Um, I did go over how to do R hops in the last video I did, and here it is. And basically, I will be installing this uh, R hop fill into the gun today. Um, so basically, this is the second and third step of what you need to do to complete the R hop install. And so let's just get started. So the first step I would normally do after installing a patch is to install uh, is to flat hop the buffy. Now, flat hopping the buffy means that you're going to be removing the um, the rubber bump that is inside the buffy. Um, what I have right here is the maple leaf buffy, and it actually tries to mass produce what the flat hop does. What this does, and what the flat hop does, is basically the idea that is behind the uh, the R hop. So basically, what you'll be doing is you'll be removing this bump in order to elongate the amount of contact that the BB has with the with the um, nub or the bump in order to magnify the magnus force behind the BB. This will allow the BB to go farther and hopefully more accurate. So let's begin. Um, so basically how I begin uh, flat hopping is by, of course, turning the buffy inside out. Now this is a very nerve wracking task if this is your first time, but that's okay. Um, I will go over it with you. Uh, I find it helpful. Now, of course, I'm doing this on my heavy, but uh, I find it helpful that uh, to use your stock brass barrel as a way to fit the buffy. Um, that what I'm talking. When I say stock, I usually mean the more the wider diameter stuff. So the 6.08s that usually come with various guns. So uh, the reason why is because it'll allow you to basically flip the buffy inside out by just rolling it, or at least the majority of it. Um, there are times where you can get most of it, but I'm just kind of getting ready. So you get this little weird thing, and usually I take a pair of uh, of oops, got the of little manicure pliers here I got from my mom, and you just basically flip it inside out. I, of course, gold it down with a grinding bit so uh, to, pre to prevent, prevent it from decaying. And voila, super, super, super easy to do. And now you can see that material that I'm talking about here. Um, I will be reviewing the Maple Leaf Buffy uh, pretty soon. It is one of my favorite buffies on the market actually right now because of this triangle shape here and how it actually affects the BB's uh, flight path to stay in a simple term. But um, basically, uh, I'll be reviewing that later, so you guys can check that out later. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make this as smooth as possible. We want to make, we want to remove this um, little bump here and this uh, uh, square amount of material purely so we can use the buffing only as an air seal method for the I mean for our R hop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a Dremel and uh, with a with one of the green grinding bits that usually come with the Dremel and turn the power to low. Yeah, definitely not low. And I'm just gonna grind away at this bit and make I mean at this material and make it as short as possible. Not short, but make it as smooth as possible. Of course, you want to be really careful with how you do this, so I'm just going to take my time, and I will get back to you guys in a second.
Okay, cool. And it is done. Um, basically, what you're going to do now is you're going to just take sandpaper and smooth it out. I'm just going to take a file that I'm going to use later on in the video because that's about to go up camping. So, um, as you can see here, super smooth. Um, and I know it doesn't look the cleanest, but I'm not the greatest at Dremel, so. But it is extremely smooth from from what I can tell. And usually, a lot of people take out this this rib area that go that helps lock in the bucking. But I don't really do that. I actually like the ribs to use it as a reference. So, and all you have to do now, make sure it's cleaned off. Make sure you didn't rip the bucking. Uh, which can happen for pitch bend or silicone based buckings and you just flip it back on and for sh as again on video um, you may I, this looks harder than it really is it's just because I'm on video and the weather boy by universal law states that everything's harder okay so Basically, um, just keep flipping this, uh, flip, flip, flipping this bucking. So with the R hop, uh, as mentioned before, the bucking becomes the air seal factor behind the R hop. The R hop it now engages the bucking and basically allows the gun to be more durable. If you didn't notice that the uh, R hop material is actually a harder a harder uh, silicone poly something poly whatever um some poly <laughs> some poly material that again is a lot more durable than this this silicone rubber bucking thing um over time buckings tend to wear down uh after a lot of contact with um a lot of contact with BBs for obvious reasons while our hops tend to they get dirty really fast, but they tend to last a lot longer. I've actually had a R-Hop wear out at me, and when I mean wear out, I mean it literally just got dirty enough that I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to take this out because, because of laziness. So, basically, that's your R-Hop right here. I mean, that, that's your flat hop right here. Um, you can feel that rib, but I mean, it feels really smooth. It feels like there's n nothing really happening. So, I mean, uh, it feels like there's no uh, bump, but the, you guys can tell I just moved and I'm like super tired. But, the show must go on. So, and yeah, so basically that's flat hopping. So, um, and now to the next part of our video. Okay, well, let's get started on the next part. Basically, the next part is going to be installing the M nub, or basically whatever nub you decide to use for the R hop. Um, I decided to use the M nub one to pay basically to pay my dues to SH5, who invented, who basically innovated the R hop and the M nub, and made the entire system possible. And also because I actually find that the M nub is the best nub for the R hop. It really is. A lot of people like using eraser nubs. A lot of people like using for some reason a maple leaf nub or any other flat hop nub. I actually really seriously do prefer the M nub because it's soft, meaning that it'll allow the R hop to move up and give a little bit to the to the BB. So it doesn't put down enough uh, and so it doesn't put down too much force. But at the same time, it's so it's hard enough that it won't give way too much and make the R hop this lackluster. Um, uh, bas basically, make it not an R hop. So, um, so I personally like using the M nub, um, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, what I'm show you how to install today. So it, this is basically going to follow very conventional R hop install methods. Uh, I mean, uh, ba basically very conventional um, hop up removal methods. Wow, I am super tired. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to remove the C clip that is going to help uh, retain your hop up and to keep your hop up center. 
and they're going to pull the hobbits out as they're turning off their as they're turning off their hobbits. They're going to be super careful, and this one's been super uh, super easy because of awesome leafery. And hey, look, it's the one we saw. I'm going to put that aside. But uh, so now you have basically this unit here, and uh, inside is going to be the nub around right here. And you're going to have these three wheels and the arm. So what you're going to do is you're going to start from the bottom. And this is assuming that you have a M4. I'm not even sure what that is. Uh, yeah, so you're going to have basically going to need. Uh, this is going to be M4 specific. Um, I do have pro ones that I can show people if needed. Um, I do have a G36 uh, hop up somewhere that if sh to show if needed. Um, and other pop-ups if needed. So just feel free to PM me and I can show you guys how to do it. So basically what I did is I unscrewed the I unscrewed the well the screw and removed the removed the controlling wheel that actually determines how much you can walk around. Then I'm gonna remove the step through here. Um, basically what I a little trick there is this uh, a there is this retaining ring. I usually put my finger over it and then put a little scoop and put very very little pressure at the at the bottom of the at the bottom of the gear like this and I'll just wedge it up and it comes out very nice and clean. And then for this part that actually controls the arm, I'm gonna flip it around. I'm just gonna press down. And then this ring is just going to come right off. Just like, oops, just like that. And so just set them off the, the center to the side. And now you have your arm and the little, the little retaining, the little retaining uh, rod in the arm that, that acts as a pivot point. And you basically just press that through and pull it out. Super easy. Alright, so of course this is slightly difficult. Just bear with me for a second. Huh. You know what I should have done? I should have checked if my audio is working. I'm using an external headset and I don't know if I plugged it into the right port. <coughs> so, <laughs> whoops. So anyways, so now after you uh, remove the rod, you can remove the arm. And this arm's going to have a spring on it, so be careful, unlike me. And the nub should be, it should come out. It also could fall out through the bottom, like that. So that's perfectly fine, as long as it comes out. This is the maple leaf nub. And as you can see, it's a lot different than the normal round nubs. And I will be revealing this soon as the system empties. So now you have like a really empty M4 like pop up, but really an O3 design insert pop up ramp here. Uh, looks pretty looks relatively clean on the outside. This guy decided to paint his pop up a little bit. I guess he just had to be lazy and not cover up the mag well, which is okay. But whatever. Um, make sure you cover up the mag well if you ever paint. So let's get back on track. Um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the take the arm and you're gonna remove the spring. Just be careful. Don't be gentle. You actually need the spring to control it back and uh, back and forth and provides actual um, whatever provides actual like pressure on the nub or else it'll be useless. And what you'll do is you'll take a file or a Dremel after you take the spring off. I don't know if you already take it off, but basically you're going to take a file and you're just going to remove these teeth here and make it as flat as possible. That way, the front, the end nub can lay straight and provide equal pressure. So let's get started on that.
and thought, all right, can you do in this? Don't be like me. Properly, properly use the file. There's, oh, hey, it fell off. Make sure you go one direction. Don't be like me. Please be lazy. And really don't care for this file because I have one in the closet. Mm -hmm. mm, I like new toys. And then, bam, look at that. Look how flat that is. This is, oh, yeah, that's magnetic. Clean it up a little bit. And these be cleaner. Oh, I'm going to delete that photo real fast just because my left hand is dominant. I mean, my right hand is dominant. And the camera is on the left, so you can see this really well. But I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. Remove all the shaving. And look at that. Look at that. Look at that. So what you can do at the end there is normally what I recommend you doing, which I'm not going to do here because I, I forgot my exact pronounce and I need to go buy a new one, is you're going to actually slant this a little bit and cut it so it's angled. And you're gonna you're gonna put the higher the higher side um, towards the back. That way, when when you're pressing when that arm is pressing in the hop up, it actually provides true equal pressure in the back and the front rather than being front dominant. That's where uh, that's actually the source of a lot of problems where uh, odd hops that are properly tuned whip up the very end a bit too high above the piercing. This is how, that's how you actually get real, true straight shots. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove the sticky pad and you do have the option to add super glue if you want. I personally don't uh, unless it decides not to stick and then I'll just throw it on there. Um, and yeah, basically that's it. Um, then, of course, you can throw it on. Now, the last step is actually throwing it on your your uh, odd hop. So, wow, I was like, I was like, you plant, plant, plant. <laughs> nice um, what I recommend doing at this point is um, after this is done installed and after this is completely done um, what I use what I recommend is actually um, going through and testing it a few times and eventually at the very ends of your test where you realize that you completely shaved this pad properly that you glue, you put a little dot of glue here and just slide the buffing in and lock it in. After locking it in, um, that's not gonna move. The air seal's gonna be improved here. It's just a win-win way of locking in. But make sure you have a thinner buffing because um, trying to like trying to glue down like a Promio or a Lonex buffing and then slipping it onto a GMP, uh, GMP hop-up system or something like that is just gonna be a straight up, uh, it's gonna be a mess. <laughs> it's pretty rough, and it'll make you panic. But basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide your flat hop buffing in, and then your hop up unit. So here we go. Make sure it's centered, and then install. Uh, then install your uh, arm. This way, you are not actually. Uh, moving in the nub, but you're actually setting the nub over, giving it tr uh, basically uh, applying the most appropriate amount of pressure possible. So after this is done, you're gonna put this on there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start from the arm back. Um, I wish I could twist this around to show you. I guess I could. <laughs> It'll just be kind of awkward for me, but it's whatever. Um, so you're gonna start with the the arm first, and then, oops, that's definitely that way. Okay, so you start with the arm first, then the gear. Oops, making a lot of mistakes today. <laughs> and then, then the middle, then the middle gear, and then we're gonna put in the little controlling wheel. Boom, lock it in. I know what I forgot. 
Thank you, Spree. But yeah, so that's basically that's basically the plot hop uh, install method. You can actually do this method and not have an IHOP and just IHOP the button and then leave it. Um, that will give you pretty good results. Um, this guy named Starfolder, aka Tori, actually made the flat hop uh, based on a few other very innovative hobbit designs. And then SH5 decided to say, hey, what if I combine this with a patch method to make it more durable? Because flat hops are notoriously not very durable. So. Then the R hop was born. Yep. So basically, that's it. I'm not gonna bore you with my with my issues here. I am having a rough day, just to know. It's I usually get this done a lot easier. I use I usually get this done a a lot a lot uh, faster and quicker and smoother. I just haven't been typing in a long time. I actually have been moving to the Seattle area. So hopefully I see you guys here if you are from Seattle. So what I just did here was actually a mod, I'm not very excited about it, was a mod that will allow me to tighten to tighten my to tighten the control wheel a lot better. And um, basically what it does is since you shorten the since you short shorten the axle, um, it allows the screw to actually really grip this control wheel and actually um, and so it, it'll be super hard to adjust and that's what you want for R hops just because usually what you do is with an R hop you adjust it and you keep it there you really don't touch I in fact haven't touched my hop other than my main gun in about a year and a half so and it's been shooting the same bit since and you just have to clean it so that's what I usually do um, so I'm not going to bore you with the rest of my reinstall. So, okay, have a great day, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Sorry for the very kind of uh, rambling video. I, I guess it's kind of my style, but um, I am just tired today. It's been about 12 hours since I slept, and it's about 10 in the morning. So, um, so yeah, have a great day, guys. This is Kilo One, Kilo Two One, signing out.